separated his play. Kelly looks against a four-man rush. Good coverage downfield. The ball is swung out to the left sideline. The catch is made. A linebacker, let's see what they do. Just four now. Kelly looks. He's got time. He lobs it to the corner of the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Nick Kovacs running a terrific route. Kick on its way. And it is good. Second down and five. This is Hutterson on a little bit of a delay, and he works his way over the field as most teams do. They use that a part of the field for those receivers to work through. Kelly throws it over the middle. He's got an open receiver. That's Anthony Spurlock, and there was nobody. Wilson in motion. Kelly looking. Throws it short. That's given the tight end. Makes a man miss. Still on his feet at the 40 and is undercut. By Richardson at that time and you see here again throwing to the tight end here Cole Kelly that's a nice outlet he sees everyone is playing off from him and then good footwork there by giving getting that extra yards and that's nearly 25% of their roster there's open field for Jones down the far sideline another first down and he's right. and the Lions are in the red zone at the 15 Kelly on a keeper stumbles his way for five for six for seven and then just it was going to be run out of bounds at about the 10. He just kept churning. Yeah, just a little sweep here to Cole Kelly. And watch him work on uh, Joyce here at the end, or 31, just kind of go right. Kelly with a lot of options. He'll take it up the middle, leans, and survives the contact, falls into the end zone. A one-yard touchdown run for Cole Kelly. 79 uh, play, 70-yard drive. It took only 240 to go. That's the game uh, changing to field as well. So. They'll try to stretch it with Cody Orgeron and, and some of the receivers. You see a long pass here. Orgeron fires it downfield. It's incomplete. Slightly. Second down and 10. Orgeron tries to step into the middle of the pocket and escape pressure, but he cannot. And preseason all Southland Conference again. Here's Mitchell. Mitchell has explosive speed, and he's Kelly looking. Throws it over the middle. It's caught for the first down, it appears. On the third down conversion, the Lions are now three out of four. Sweep to the right side. And Jesse Britt. That's a lot different than a lot of these spread teams you'll see today. Kelly fakes on the sweep and then dumps it off to the weak side to Damian Dawson. Second and five. A little dump off in the backfield. And there's some running room for Terrell Carter. Yeah, Carter does a nice job coming across the line of scrimmage, getting that ball quickly out there from Cole Kelly and makes a quick first down. Gary, this is one of the most sophisticated passing offenses that you'll see at this or any level of three receivers to the left side. Kelly has plenty of time. Cranks it home, oh. bobbled, and dropped a sure touchdown. Was Drelly just surveying the field as he looks across. Take a look at the pass. There's an easy throw and catch. This is like practice, guys. There's nobody there. I mean, there was the, no defender inside there. And CJ Ringafo lines it up, bangs it, and it is good. So Orgeron hands it off as the Cowboys try to get the running game established. That's Hutterson who scored. Orgeron looks, throws it short on the slant, and it is incomplete through the hand. Tries pretty much straight away. The kick has plenty of distance, and it is no good. B. Kelly will throw for it, steps up into the pocket, cranks it, and it is caught. A very fine stretching catch made by Turner. Well, he's got some great hands and long fingers, Lan. I think <laughs> he's got some extra stretch in those fingers because that's what it would take to pull that one in performer the Lions run right up the gut with good success yeah that's McClendon there for Southeastern he'll try it again ripping up the middle snorting pulling Cowboys with him another first down as he crosses the 30 and is knocked down at the 28 Back Five here a long drive here and put points on the board would be a huge win here for McNeese as we get approach uh, the halftime mark 840 Orgeron hands it off, and the Lions cover the left side defensively very nicely. Puddle now. Orgeron fakes. 
and he's hit and he steps away from a would-be sack and then leans ahead. He did not get back to the line of scrimmage, but he did avoid about a six or seven yard loss. Here, watch him from his defensive in uh, inside tackle spot. 47 beats the offensive lineman, Hayden Shaw, and unfortunately he's unable to get him to the ground. Back to the ground for the Cowboys and very little traction, if any. Hutterson ran into a plans, bring a four-man rush. Orgeron is pressured and down he goes. He was able, able to escape the first defender, but then he was... He walked the top left of your screen there. Good up on underarm. Number 40 puts the pressure on there. And then the rest of the charge there comes inside to get that sack on Cody Orgeron and brings up a fourth down and punting situation. Kelly pressured, now slings it out. And the tackle made at about the 12-yard line on Toronto. Rush three, there's a tip ball. It's tipped and then caught, I believe, by Dingle. There is a penalty mark. And that is enough for a first down. It's kind of a screen route there for one of the receivers that's going up there. Mark. Kelly looking, pulling it down. Now he'll lumber to the 25. He slides at the 30. There's a penalty marker down back in the pocket, probably holding. As he came in here on Cole Kelly. So Kelly, the pocket breaks down, and he's got room to his left. Chambers is trying to get to him there, number 40. Then Ken, then the defensive lineman also is, is knocked out, and he, he he leaves with his shoulder. That's not targeting at all. Well, now hopefully they'll uh, get this cleaned up pretty quickly. Watch at the end of the play here. Watch the shoulder of the, the defender come down and hit him in the numbers. Shoulder. You see there, his shoulder, his head is completely out of it. But it, that is a personal foul of hitting a defenseless sliding quarterback, so that's the call. It shouldn't be targeting. It should be a personal foul. And I think that makes only a three-man rush. He fires it over the middle. He's got an open receiver at midfield. That's the first down and more. And Kelly had time to throw and whipped it right into the gut. Kelly hits him quickly and line up here for another play. Spurlock, a transfer out of Western Kentucky. Counting. Kelly throws it to the outside. A leaping catch is made by Terrell Carter. Well done. Looking. Throws it short over the middle. And crossing the 20 and getting to about the 16 is Tim Wilson. Kelly looking, sets, lumbers ahead. He's got some yardage in front of him. To the 10, to the 5, he's got enough for a first down. That will stop the clock. He's, and he just finds a gap there in the middle. You know, he's got enough speed here to get things back through there. McKenzie almost had him in the backfield. Kelly looking. He's hit as he throws, it's lobbed up, it is caught, touchdown! It was not pretty, but it was effective. C.J. Turner got up. And it is good. There are two seconds remaining in the half for the Lions on the first, uh, in the first half. See the pressure there by the defense there coming from the outside. C.J. Turner getting his hands up in the air after Cole Kelly tosses it up there. Good job by him of being able to be there Line to make is midfield. Orgeron wants to throw for it. He's flushed out of the pocket. Throws it short, and it's batted up and falls incomplete. Now they move the ball out here to near mid. Now you'd like to get your punter to pin the ball down there deep if you can. If you're McNeese, see the ball thrown to the outside, and good defense on the outside there. Again, I think that's Barbie. This one will be returned from the nine. A nice run back in progress, weaving out for Kelly and company. Three-man rush, he dumps it off short. It's the tight end, Given, and Given bowls his way forward. He got the penalty yardage back, and then the zone, and Cole Kelly reads the defense, finds him, he's there again if he wants him. Kelly goes to C.J. Turner over the middle. Near as they take a second or two longer to develop, and the offensive line continues to do a great job. Kelly throws it to an open receiver inside the 20. He's knocked down inside the 15. It's the deep play threat, Austin Mitchell. We haven't seen much of this today from Southeastern because it's just been the Cole Kelly show. But just play action pass here allows Austin Mitchell to go down the field. And as can Lake Charles, Kelly looking, quickly throws it out to the right side. It looks like Mitchell, and he is digging for first down yardage. He's run out of... Kelly keeps it, 
to the five, to the three. He's bumped. He falls forward to the one-yard line. Design play that they ran here, so he does a nice job. There you go. Take it up. Let them all come up the field, and Cole Kelly does his best and dives for that first. Before he got to the stripe. Now we'll take a look at how close they got here right down the line, and good job of just physical play there. Is that for Lando? That's Corian Harris who made that tackle from his nickel spot. Southern Conference Defensive Player of the Week last week comes in with Bith with a big tackle. And the Lions follow that with a touchdown. Renifo will let it fly off that right foot, and he's good. Eight. Well, it's just going to be punching the ball in here because he got that ball down there from Cole Kelly inside, and good job by Jones is just finding a way to get through there and pops it into the end zone. Jones just reading that blocking, found a little bit of a schism through which to... Jones up the gut, tripped up as he crosses wide on the right side. Kelly looking for him, now throws it short, caught, and I think it's going to be a first down, but we will see Cowboys to put their offense back on the field if they can hold. Kelly will lumber for it. He's got a first down, slides down at about the 45. Now, Cole Kelly did not see the defense area. They are all very active. Orgeron looking to pass, lobs it downfield. It is broken up at the 40-yard line. And they're going to give that an interception. Right. The southeastern sideline. Watch this. Incredible. What a catch there. That might Incredible. make... Incredible. That's going to make some highlight reels there, my friends. Watch this as Brandon Barbie goes up with his right hand only, pulls that ball in. Ball just a little bit underthrown, and he makes one heck of a grab here and a huge turnover as McNeese thinking they're going to move this ball down there. The ball now goes back. He started his career at Moorhead State. He's from Orlando, Florida. The pass out. He started his career at Moorhead State. He's from Orlando, Florida. The pass out to the left side is high, but grabbed for decent yardage. But the credit that one. That was well played and tremendous job of catching that football with one hand. Right back to the little flare pass goes the Lions, and they, as they often do, turn it into some decent yardage. The big fellow hesitates and powers his way to the 40. Or the, so essentially third and 10. Kelly throws. It's caught, but the receiver... Open field tackle on Pierce at midfield. Man, that was going to be happening, and so they got in behind the blockers, and, Co and Pierce, if he was to come inside, it's kind of a scissor screen as Cody Orgeron gets a, a pop and goes to the ground. The factor with the wind and the clouds. But we didn't see the parapokes come delivering the game ball. There's a perfect delivery right into the hands of the receiver, C.J. Turner. You cannot throw a ball better than that, and Turner cannot run a better route and turn and capture it at the right moment. Quarterback throws the receiver open. The only way that this ball is caught is he turns and catches it on his own because he's going working away from the defender. Good job by Cole Kelly putting it on the spot and a great grab by Turner. A big hit may have present, uh, prevented the first down. They need to get to the 23-yard line, as you said, Lynn, and where did he catch him? Where did he get contacted? So he, he's right at that marker. So I think it's probably a pretty fair spot. McGee on the reception is full complement of receivers. He'll take a look and then scramble. To the 20, goes down, the helmet comes off again, and we've got penalty markers coming, and Kelly is claiming he was hit illegally. And if that in the secondary to kind of help out in coverage and watch him here at the end of the play, see, is there targeting? He may have hit him on the backside. Let's, so that was Joyce on the front side, number five, and a little flyby here. Here's 23, watch 23. Uh, that is gonna be targeting to the back of the head. By the way, has thrown for 12 to 12 different receivers today. He lobs it, caught, back corner of the end zone, touchdown. Kelly faking the run, got it to Tim Wilson, who was basically unguarded, and the Lions get a touchdown to extend their lead. Little strikes it, and it is good.
Reception by Tim Wilson. Now Tim Wilson does a nice job on the outside, but Cole Kelly with all the trickery inside on the play fake. Wilson in the back of the end zone gets another touchdown for Southeastern. Good field position already. Well, the Cowboys now will waste no time in trying to squeeze as many plays into the remaining. Kelly will throw on first down. And we've got a penalty marker down after the reception. Same play to the other side. Throws it out to Dingle again, and he's able to weave for some yardage. Louisiana holds on for a 38-35 victory over the stubborn McNeese Cowboys. The Lions go to 1-0 in the Southland Conference as they open on the road as they've been all year long and get uh, a victory in Southland Conference week number one. The Cowboys fall to 0-2 with cannon blast. <laughs> Frank, let me, let me go right to your decision at the end of the game. Fourth down, a couple of feet to go. You sneak your quarterback, Cole Kelly. Was there any decision-making going on prior to that? How close were you were to punt it away or No, give it back? no, no, never, never. We want to win the game. I, I, that's not how we play. We go win the game. We're not looking to punt and hope we hang on at the end. Uh-uh. That's not going to happen here. Uh, be bold is what we say we're going to do. We're going to do that. We got three senior offensive linemen. Got a veteran group, a veteran quarterback. Figure it out. Let's go get it. Well, Frank, it's been a long time since the uh, Southeastern has won this one in this location. Talk about how difficult it is to come into Cowboy Stadium, the hole here, and come out with a victory. Yeah, welcome to the that's what the country needs to know. You know, they, they kind of look down on us, or the Southland, because we don't have a bunch of teams in here anymore. But uh, they better wake up. You want to come visit some of these places? I promise you, Frank Wilson will let you play here. I'd love to have anybody come visit Strawberry Stadium. Thibodeau is wide open. You want to go to Northwestern? Come on down to all of these places. Uh, it's a tough place to play, man, in this conference. Talk about the conference overall and what your thoughts are as far as this is going to come down. You, we're playing each other. You're going to play McNeese again here down the road. What is it like playing back and back like that for you uh, That's not about We did that in the NFL. Everybody does it in the NFL every year. So uh, it's not a big deal, but that's not our concern. Our concern is to enjoy this win, and then we get ready for next week. Frank, what's your message now to football star fans in the Hammond area who have not seen your team play because of uh, hurricane problems and infrastructure problems? You'll be back in a couple of weeks. I expect that uh, the excitement level is boiling in the Hammond, Southeast Louisiana area. Well, we hope so. Uh, but we got a lot of people that are still going through some tough situations. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going to do that. But we hope to give them a Saturday in Strawberry Stadium that they'll remember when they come in for that first home game. Congratulations on your victory. Congratulations on your national ranking. Appreciate y'all. Thank y'all so much. Frank Selfo for the 38-35 victory. Well, Southeastern came out and playing, playing very well. And you see Cole Kelly with his ability to throw the ball back out there. And he just does a nice little pass. And then he gets it done with his feet also. We talked about him being the leading rusher in touchdowns for this team. He pitched in with one or two today. And then C.J. Turner get the ball in the end zone. A little ball that's floating with Kelly getting contact. But he came down with a nice grab. Then this is kind of a funky little play here that happened to the benefit of the Cowboys because that ball was punted off a left-footed punter, by the way. And... They got the ball back, and they started to make a little little jump here to get back into this ball game. 546 yards of total offense for the Lions. The Cowboys with 367. But how about that young man who was electric for the Cowboys? Well, Mason Pierce, you know, we talked about him at the beginning of the show, and that is that he's going to be one of the guys that is the, the catalyst, I think, a big play guy for this thing. And all of a sudden, you've got a one <laughs> miraculous type of a, of, of a interception there trying to get the ball to Mason Pierce, but the Southeastern came up with a takeaway. By the way, for the record, that was Justin Douglas. We got that right now. Through there, I think that he's had one heck of a ball game. You look at Cole Kelly, the Walter Payton Award winner from a season ago, and he led his team to a victory. If you take a look at the numbers, and really just something impressive here, 381 yards passing, 155 yards rushing. They came into this game, Lynn, averaging 540 yards per game there at 335, 36 right there. I think that this, not, this, this was really a typical Southeastern Lions football game. And one interesting note, the quarterbacks for both teams today were the leading rushers for their respective teams. You know, sometimes that happens in these games where you don't necessarily have a ground attack that you fall back on, but you need to have that quarterback to give you that little bit of a different dimension to keep the, the defense at bay. Well, part of that's the story from Lake Charles, Louisiana, the place they call the hole on the McNeese campus.
for Gary Reasons. I'm Lynn Rollins. For all of us at Cox Sports Television, we thank you for watching. The final score is Southeastern 35, Magne uh, 38, Magnese 35.